Welcome to another edition of Beat Diabetes, our books and quotes series. And we're going to continue today to look at Dr. Benjamin Bickman's book, Why We Get Sick. We've been looking at it for a couple of weeks. And up till now, we just barely scratched the surface. Now, obviously, there's a whole lot more in this book that I could possibly share. Uh, but uh, today, I want to kind of get at the heart of uh, much of what he's saying in terms of the problem. And really what Dr. Bickman is saying, I call him Dr. Bickman. He is a researcher, a scientist. Uh, he is not a medical doctor, but he does have a PhD. Anyway, at the heart of what Benjamin Bickman is saying is that insulin resistance is behind all kinds of the bad guys that are plaguing our world today. Bad guys like diabetes, like heart disease and heart attacks and strokes and a number of other things you might not consider. So we're going to kind of look at that today. And let me just start out by his little uh, simple definition of insulin resistance. Now, I say simple. Actually, he goes into some detail, but I don't have time to share all that he says. But he says this, at its simplest, insulin resistance is a reduced response to the hormone insulin. Reduced response means you don't process insulin the way you should. He goes on to say the key feature of insulin resistance is that blood levels of insulins, insulin are higher than they used to be, and the insulin often doesn't work as well. In other words, you've got the insulin. He's talking about pre-diabetes or insulin resistance. You may not be fully diabetic. The, the doctor may have never told you you're a diabetic and your A1C may be below that 6.5 marker for diabetes, and yet you've got insulin resistance. And he says at the heart of it is your body doesn't handle insulin very well. And as a result, you end up needing more insulin to do the job. I like to call this uh, metabolic inflation. Back in the uh, 19, late 1970s, I got a job as a school teacher in Ellsbury, Missouri. And that was my first grown-up job. I think I was, I don't know, in my 20s at the time, not, not uh, too far along in my 20s. So I got a job as a fourth grade school teacher. And my contract was for $7,700 per year. That was my yearly salary, $7,700. Now, they bumped it up somehow. I don't remember why, but they gave me an extra $300 to make it $8,000 before long. So I ended up with an $8,000 yearly salary. Well, even, <laughs> even in those days, that wasn't much. And it certainly wouldn't be much now. Uh, you couldn't live on $8,000 a year. At least most people couldn't and pay your house bills and, and your rent and your, your uh, fuel and electricity and all the things you do, you just couldn't live like that on, on that much money. Not here in America. Now, I know there are other countries where they live on next to nothing, but Americans would have a hard time with that. So what's happened? Well, we call that inflation. And uh, things cost more than they used to. And they talk about the inflation in Germany just before World War II, where you would have to take a wheelbarrow full of the German marks just to pay for a few groceries. So it cost more than it used to. You could still get what you used to could buy, but you'd have to pay more. Insulin resistance is kind of like inflation. You can keep your glucose down low for quite a while, or when I say low, relatively low, but it costs more insulin. You've got to pay twice as much, three times as much, five times as much insulin as you used to because your body doesn't process insulin well and can't deal with carbohydrates well. And as a result, your body is flooded with insulin. Your bloodstream has lots of insulin in it, and that's a condition called hyperinsulinemia. Now, Dr. Bickman says that when that's the case, you're setting yourself up for all kinds of physical problems and diseases and afflictions. And I, I obviously don't have time to go into too much detail, but let's just talk about some of them. Um, let's see what the next one is here. Okay, he talks about heart health. And uh, he, he has a chapter on what the problem is with your heart. Now, we thought we had nailed it years ago. I mean, way back in the 70s, we figured we've got this thing figured out. 
You've got heart attacks, heart problems, strokes, heart health issues because you eat too much meat. And if you can just cut the meat down and all that saturated fat, you're, you're, you're good. Uh, we have come to see, at least many have, come to see that the problem was never the saturated fat. The problem was the carbs and the sugars. Here's what Benjamin Bickman says. He says, I hope it's clear by now. Though we often blame other factors, there is no single variable more relevant to heart disease than insulin resistance. Any successful efforts to reduce our high risk of heart disease must address it. In other words, if you're concerned about your heart, and everybody ought to be because heart disease is so prevalent. I mean, it's ubiquitous these days, heart problems, heart disease, clogged arteries, and so forth. If you're concerned and you don't deal with insulin resistance and you don't care that it's taken you four times as much insulin to keep your glucose down as it used to, or maybe now even four times as much insulin can't do the job and now your blood sugar's starting to go up and now the doctor's saying you have diabetes. But what he's saying is that's a heart issue. Your heart is at risk because of your insulin resistance. And he goes through the first half or a little over the first half of the book talking about various issues. He talks about the brain and neurolo neurological dis diseases. He talks about reproductive health and fertility. And he declares that even in that case, which most people wouldn't even think had anything to do with insulin, he says uh, insulin can be a player in that. He says reproduction is a demanding process. The body wants to ensure things are working right, including metabolic function, before worrying about the next generation. Insulin, the king of all metabolic hormones, is a strong indicator of metabolic status in the body, and high insulin rings a warning bell. From the brain to the ovaries and testes, insulin either facilitates or frustrates reproduction. So in many cases, reproduction is hampered or stopped and you can't have children, you can't conceive or you can't uh, get pregnant simply because your insulin is so high, you're high your body is saying, this just ain't going to work. Now, that's according to Benjamin Bickman. I, I must admit, I haven't heard that a lot, but that's one of the, the cases he makes in his book. And he just goes after one issue after another and says... Uh, insulin resistance is a major player in all these things. He deals with the issue of cancer. Now, that's something we hear frequently, that cancer is often uh, a problem when you have insulin resistance or when you have diabetes. So he says, men with high degree of insulin resistance may be upwards of 250% more likely to develop prostate cancer compared with insulin sensitive men of the same age, race, and body weight. In fact, prostate cancer and insulin resistance occur together so often that some scientists have questioned whether prostate cancer might be an additional eventual symptom of insulin resistance. Wow a symptom, cancer, a symptom of insulin resistance. Too much insulin in the body. Your, your blood sugar issues are starting to get out of control. Your insulin is surging. You've got five times as much insulin as you should have in your blood. And uh, from what I'm hearing, cancer often and, and normally cancer cells will feed on sugar and high blood sugar. And apparently high insulin does not help. He talks about many other issues that uh, he feels insulin resistance plays a role in. Aging, the condition of your skin. Your skin is more likely to age and, and get uh, splotches and, and wrinkles and skin tags as a result of too much insulin and all kinds of things. We all know that blood pressure is a problem with metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance. So, I mean, he just names one problem after another after another and says, insulin resistance is a major issue. Why aren't you concerned? Is kind of the implication. And it's kind of funny because up till now, we've been so concerned about cholesterol. Cholesterol was the boogeyman. Cholesterol was the bad guy. How's your cholesterol? What's your cholesterol doing? Is it over 200? Ooh, I'd watch that cholesterol. And that's all we care about. And what guys like Bickman and others are saying is cholesterol, schlemesterol, insulin resistance is a much bigger bad guy than cholesterol ever was. And your A1C doesn't even have to be out, totally out of control. 
You know, your body will fight blood sugar so hard, it will produce all that insulin to try to fight it. And you may get an A1C and your doctor will tell you you're not diabetic. Maybe you're pre-diabetic. Maybe you're just under pre-diabetic, but your insulin is surging. It's a bad guy and it's creating all kinds of problems. I developed all kinds of issues while I still had a relatively normal A1C, definitely not diabetic. But I was getting all kinds of things, including rheumatoid arthritis. That's why I've got these knots in my fingers. This was before I was ever diagnosed as diabetic. In fact, I never was. But this was, bef- was when my A1C was in a relatively good place. But I was getting surges of glucose. And surges of glucose, guess what? Brings about high insulin. And a lot of times your glucose may be down in a couple of hours, but your insulin stays high. And you're going through day after day after day after day with high insulin. It is not a healthy situation. And if you really believe this, if you really believe, and the the evidence is becoming stronger and stronger that insulin resistance is a terrible condition leading to all kinds of things. If you really believe it, you will fight insulin resistance like you fight almost nothing else. In days gone by, We assume that all our problems could be solved if we just get enough vitamins and jam enough nutrients in our bodies. So our big goal in life was get lots of vitamins, have some fruit, have some more fruit. How many servings of fruit do you eat per day? Well, I eat three. Make that five. No, better off seven servings of fruit. Have bananas and mangoes for breakfast. Have apples and oranges for lunch and just just jam the fruit. And because we all know vitamins are the thing, baby, just more vitamins, more vitamins, more vitamins. It turns out, and I'm not against vitamins, but there's other way to get them besides jamming your body with fruit and fructose and sugar. But it turns out that high insulin, insulin resistance, which can eventually lead to diabetes, but can lead to so many other things, are far more important than whether you're getting enough vitamin C or vitamin this or vitamin that. By all means, try to eat nutritionally, but do it in a way that will not make you insulin resistant and eventually diabetic. There are other ways to get your vitamins. And don't be so fanatical that that's all you care about. Because back in the old days, We just cared about vitamins and we didn't think a thing about carbs and sugars. As long as you're getting your vitamins, who cares what you're, how much sugar you're jamming into your body? Just get those vitamins. And oftentimes we would take vitamins, we would eat lots of fruit, and we'd feel very noble, very righteous, very virtuous because we're getting our vitamins. Never mind the fact that we're eating a lot of junk. And that our our blood sugar is starting to rise and our insulin levels are surging, at least we're getting our vitamins. If you had to choose between getting lots of vitamins and having insulin resistance or getting lesser vitamins and not having insulin resistance, I'd go for the lesser vitamins every time. And I do take a multivitamin and and, uh, I eat salads and things to get some nutrition. So I'm not saying don't do that. But I am saying the biggest problem you can face health-wise, it seems from guys like Dr. Bickman and others, is this problem of metabolic syndrome slash insulin resistance slash hyperinsulinemia. Whatever you deal with in your health issues, in your lifestyle, in your diet, whatever issues you face, make sure that's at the top of your list. I'm not going to be insulin resistant. I may have this problem, I may have that problem, but I do not want lots of insulin surging in my body. That's at the heart of this book. He's saying it's the bad guy. It's the the guy you ought to be concerned about more than any others. If I've got a big six foot five inch, (laughs) six foot five tall bully coming at me with a baseball bat, and I've got a little short fella about five foot four coming at me with a stick, I would... (laughs) I better deal with that big giant guy first. He's the bigger danger. Let the little short fella leave him alone for a while and deal with the giant. If you can overcome the giant, then you can turn your attention to the short little fella and deal with him. And insulin resistance is the giant, the monster, the big, tall, strong guy that wants to wipe you out and take you out from this life. 
If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.